Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to do something a little different. We're going to start off with a writing sample. Um, one of my pen buddies recommended it, and he said sometimes he skips ahead to just go to the writing sample. So therefore, I thought we would start with a writing sample. You may recognize this pen. It's a Parker Dual Fold. It's one of the early series, uh, late 1920s. It's been restored. And after the writing sample, we'll show that you that restoration process as found condition found in my box of pens. So the cap unscrews less than half a turn to reveal a very nice nib. Interesting nib. It's, it's not labeled anything in particular, but I would call that a manifold or signature nib. It's a little stubbish, a very short tine, so there's no flexor give in this nib, but the pen fits great in the hand unposted, and this is not a pen I would post. So let's see how the nib works. So hopefully you can see that this is a great nib, wonderful flow, and this Roher and Klinger Alt Gold Run Ink just works great in the pen. I'm getting a bunch of text messages. So this is very smooth, excellent ink flow. Yeah, nice shading with this ink and, and this nib and this pen. So overall, I'm extremely pleased. You know, not a typical vintage nib, no flex to it. But I'd put this writing experience up against any other nib that you're going to have. And I think the purpose of this signature or manifold nib is the fact that it is stiff. So when you do signatures... You can be very consistent with them, and it keeps up with fast writing, too. Every once in a while, I just get very motivated to restore the writing condition a vintage pen that I have. And Parker Dufold here, one of the earlier ones, single band here at the bottom. So I've taken it apart. I'm not going to knock the nib and feet out because they have good bit flow and there's uh, not much ink in there. I've done partial cleaning primarily to the barrel and cap just to get out a little bit of that black oxidation and corrosion it gets in there from ink and from the uh, old sack that was in there. When I took this pen apart there was no remnants of the old sack so an earlier owner, may have been me, 30 some 40 years ago that may have tried to restore it but finished uh, didn't finish so you know I'll clean this up I'll work on it I mean it's a really great design with this top finial on the cap that unscrews the blind cap at the bottom the button filler so I'm very happy that I got started with this you know, this is never going to be perfect, but, you know, a pen that's almost 100 years old, it's not going to be perfect. You know, that celluloid is a very nice material. It's pretty thick in this pen. You know, Parker had ads about dropping it out of airplanes and dropping it off of high buildings and having a pen being indestructible, which is uh, something a, a new pen, a new Italian pen maker is advertised on their latest pen, which I think is great. 
I watched uh, the video that he did with Brian and, and I enjoyed it. So that's the other thing that motivated me to get this pen restored. So we're going to continue to work on cleaning it up and then we'll do a final look when it's all ready to be reassembled and inked. The pen has been cleaned up and ready for assembly. I'm very happy how the clip turned out, nice and clean. If we flip it over, we'll see kind of like a raw brass and that ball end there is uh, formed. So this is stamped out of a sheet of uh, gold filled brass, probably just gold filled on one side. And that same type of design we see when we looked at the pen BBS clip from the other side of the 308 that I recently took apart. As I mentioned before, the celluloid is not going to come out perfect, but I'm certainly very happy with the amount of cleaning I was able to do. I think that black dot is strange. I don't know what caused it. But you know, for this resin and this pen, this is about as good as it gets. Very nice uh, imprint there in the barrel. So I don't think this pen saw a lot of use. One of the other things that I did is I totally cleaned up this part of the pressure bar. So when I slide this in over the sack, it'll slide very easily. And that to me is an important part when you put these together. And we'll take a look at that when I do it. Yes, this is an interesting nib. It's like a stub, which I don't have in any of my other dual folds. The other thing I learned about, which I didn't know, there's a P underneath of the pen. And that P apparently, the rumor is it means that this nib was made by Parker and not made by a subcontractor, which apparently they did subcontract out. They're nib manufacturing at times. So one of the challenges that I had with this pen was the threads at the end of the barrel have been worn. So you don't really get any real grip from these initial threads. So when you capped it, it didn't catch. So that's rising up against this finial which screws down and holds in the clip. So I just sand it off a little bit, maybe a half a millimeter here. So it'll go together a little bit and I've done a dry run and I'm very happy with how I think it's going to work. And I polish the end of the button filler. Just how those I think it's cool. So we're going to find a sack to put on here, get it ready to insert and I'll show you the technique that I use for that. Uh, we're ready for the insertion of the sack. I put the cap together. I try to position that clip in between those two breather holes. You know, kind of the OCD thing. One of the things that I noticed when I was working on the pen is this blind cap is very rough at the very top there. So it leads me to believe that this was vulcanized in a mold and that's the raw kind of like texture from the vulcanization and then it was machined, threaded and things like that. Probably in a couple stages. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert this first, insert the sack first before we put in the pressure bar. That makes the sack slide in very easily, that section slides in very well. So this is a technique that I hope will work and, and avoid any twisting of the, of the sack. Going to do a little bit off camera and then do a final ins install on camera. I just had to do some slight adjusting. I pulled out the section just a little bit to get that to slide into place. And the end of that is up against the end of that section. So this uh, pressure knob 
just kind of snaps in place. And there we have it. So I put a little silicone grease on those threads. So that slides on very well. And now let's see how the cap goes on. It's, it, it stays secure. It's still only about a quarter turn, but it's more than it had before. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to do some ink up and then see how that interesting nib writes. So you may ask, uh, Chris, how many dual folds do you have? Well, here's some of them. As uh, many of you probably know, I've been collecting since the 70s, and I collected in a lot of different places, um, mostly New York City and the surroundings, but also around the country. So I got to pick up a lot. You may ask, uh, what are your two unique ones? And I would pick these two from a resin and color viewpoint. You know, there's a nice kind of like a dark, blue stripey one and this is a very interesting green if you open up both of these you notice they have the standard Parker lucky curve nib so this pl places them in the earlier series I think Parker reused a lot of parts because lucky curve was the original pen that they had and here's one example of it. You know, they started these, I think, in 1911. I'll recheck my notes. This has a very nice imprint on it. And the strange thing about this one is when you open it up, it has a Waterman nib and a Waterman feed. So certainly at some point in time in this pen's history, that nib has been replaced. But the outside of the pen is almost mint, so that makes it interesting. Here we see like a junior dual fold. Here's another example of the green jade that is not in as good a shape as the one I restored. You know, the material can crack. It is called unbreakable, but it's not a totally unbreakable. And you have some discoloration from the sack and the feed. Here's two junior versions of jade. So single band, double band, triple band, that's some ways to date it and also to talk about quality. Here's two big reds. One of these has cracking issues, but has a nice flexible nib. So I could play around with salvaging parts, moving parts around. These two uh, ivory versions are excellent condition. They're restored to writing condition, a little bit of cleanup work, but I would call them pretty much almost mint. And very nice. This is that streamlined version. Came out in the you know late twenties, early thirties. Uh, you know, Schaefer had their balance out. So here's a way of showing the difference between the streamline and the regular square top. I mean, it's a subtle change, and this clip hasn't been worked on, but you know. That's the fun part. If I wanted to just restore these and work on this as a series, I could probably spend a long time doing that. I just want to end with this. Here's a Schaefer model here, which is meant to emulate the dual fold design with the black finials and the cap and the barrel. Here we can see with standard discoloration, there's obviously some type of cap liner in there, which eventually attacked the celluloid and created discoloration. And then finally, we're going to end with this tier three one. You can see that has that white speckles in it, which is one of the forms of jade that Parker used. But if we try to find the imprint, we'll see it says Dixie non-breakable from Libertyville, Illinois. So, you know, there was a lot of emulation and mimicry back then when these pens sold millions a year. Um, and it was an extremely lucrative American business. And as all things change, that eventually changed. I'm very happy with this black version of the Big Red, but this has some interesting aberrations in the material. It has that arrow nib in it, which is more of the modern style nib. Came out, I think, first in the vacuum attics and then moved over 
to the dual folds as they probably, you know, moved their nib manufacturing away from that standard, got rid of the lucky curve, got rid of the dual fold nib, and went to that classic aero design. So at some point in time, I'll do a dual fold retrospective using uh, these pens and probably a few others. Stay tuned. So we've reached the end of this video. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the new format. Let me know. I appreciate comments. I really enjoy interacting with uh, my viewers. So may you have many great, wonderful pen experiences. Not only do we have a modern pen world, but we also have a vintage pen world that just becomes very interesting and intriguing at times. So put some ink on paper. We've reached the end of this video. Until the next one, bye for now. Have a great day. Have a great life. That ink looks good.